Hello everyone, my name is Norman and welcome back to the series on getting started with Java, JDBC and the Oracle database. In this episode, we'll talk about JDBC service provider extensions with a focus on one of its types, centralized config providers. This feature provides useful advantages such as being able to manage connection strings across all applications or securing access to managing, creating, rotating and deleting users in secrets. Let's begin. Starting from the Oracle Database 23 AI release, the Oracle JDBC driver can be extended to enable integrations with other cloud services and APIs using service provider interfaces. Currently, three types of service providers exist. Centralized config providers enable developers to keep and retrieve the database client configurations in a centralized source. This provider furnishes the driver all configurable information required to create the connection and define its properties. Resource providers offer developers the ability to individually identify and retrieve information more granularly. This provides Oracle JDBC single resources towards configuring a database client. A common use case for resource providers is for when you only want to provide one resource, like a database password, that is periodically updated. Tracer providers, different from the previous two types of providers, enable the integration of Oracle JDBC and OpenTelemetry. Starting from the Oracle Database 23 AI release, the JDBC driver can generate events. The provider implements a listener that publishes these events, which can then be used to monitor a JDBC application. More on centralized config providers, this type of provider enables users to have centralized management of the database information. These include the connection string, database username, password, the database wallet, and or various Oracle JDBC properties. Sensitive values like the password and wallet may also be stored in the vault in the cloud, and their identifier can be used instead. For some providers, these configurable values are stored in a JSON payload. The JSON payload can also have multiple sets of database credentials and can be uniquely identified with keys. For other config providers, the values may be stored in a cloud service. Lastly, different kinds of centralized config providers will have a different connection URL format. Let's take a closer look. Currently, there are various kinds of supported centralized configuration providers. Note how each provider has a different connection URL. Built-in providers such as file and HTTPS require no additional jars and uses JSON payloads. OCI-based providers will require a specific jar, an authentication to connect, and provide access to OCI resources. OCI object storage and OCI vault use the JSON document that has your configurations. Meanwhile, OCI database tools is a managed service that can be used to configure connections to a database and more features. Azure-based providers will require a specific jar and authentication. Azure App Config is an Azure service for centralized managing application settings and feature flags. Azure Vault is similar to OCI Vault in that it also uses a JSON document. Integration with cloud services like the OCI Vault or Azure App Config will require some authentication. These are the supported authentication methods or credentials that can be used. In the following demos, we will only demonstrate API key-based authentication for OCI examples and interactive browser credentials for Azure. For this demo, we start with the OCI object storage provider. Here are the high-level and simplified steps in setting up this kind of centralized config provider. OCI object storage lets us store the JSON document inside the bucket, manage the JSON configuration files, and share only the bucket URL with developers to connect to the database. On the right, we have an example of this JSON payload we will use. We have an ADB admin user with a password and wallet inside the OCI vault, and for their value, we have set their OCI ID or cloud identifiers. Both the password and wallet location will use the OCI default or the default authentication method, which uses API key-based authentication. We also have a few JDBC connection properties configured set as an example. Our demo application is running locally, and we have a local OCI config for authentication. We also have added the required OJDBC provider OCI dependency for working with OCI-based providers. Let's navigate to our Java application. Here we have a basic Java application. We have a class name provider with static properties that show the different connection URLs that we will use for our demos. 
in our main method, we simply set the URL to the value of defined in our constant variables. Database config is a separate class we wrote to configure the data source with the system property Oracle URL, which is assigned to whichever property of provider we assign it to. Since this is a demo on the OCA object storage config provider, we assign it to the constant that has this config OCA object form. In our method run connection test, we establish a connection to the database and run a simple query, a select from dual query to test our connection to our autonomous database. Our POM file also includes the following dependencies, more notably the OJDBC provider OCI for integrating with OCI cloud services. On OCI, we also have our bucket with a connect.json file. From here, we'll take the URL. We go to view object details and the URL path should be available here. We just copy this and paste it in our application. From here, we can run the application and see that it was successful. Next, the built-in file configuration provider's function similarly to object storage, where it uses a JSON payload, except the JSON file is a local file. The sample JSON payload shows the use of keys this time to identify this set of credentials. In the JSON on the right, this key is the string example. Configuring the file configuration provider is simpler as it does not require any extra jars and other resources to provision. Let's try this out with a Java application. Navigating back to our application, we will now try the built-in file config provider. File config provider enables us to locally use a JSON document that has our configuration. In this example, our connect.json file lives inside our project directory. This time we are using a key for our configuration as we have other configurations here for other purposes, like for connecting locally to a different database, for example. We'll copy the path and paste it here. We'll add the key and set it equals to example. We will change the value of the Oracle URL property to our built-in file config property and run. There we go. Finally, the Azure App Config provider enables us to integrate with Azure's App Config cloud service. This provider enables us to centralize any application settings and feature flags. In this demo, we have created an Azure App Configuration instance in which we have the same database app configurations from before with a key example, but also the label dev, which is only available with the Azure App Config provider. In our Java application, we have added the required OJDBC provider Azure in our POM file which has the Azure SDK libraries built in. Let's check this out with a demo application. For this last example, we have created an app config resource in an Azure instance. We have an image of our app config key values in the previous slide. We have set each property prefix with a key example and a label of dev. In our Java application, our POM file has the OJDBC provider Azure dependency, which is required for interacting with Azure resources. Now we need to provide the name of our app config resource as well as set the key and label in our connection URL. Since we will also use interactive mode as the authentication method for this example, we can also set the authentication mode here by adding authentication equals Azure Interactive. Finally, we change the Oracle URL property to the appropriate connection URL and run the application. This will challenge us to authenticate on our browser. This completes the challenge and the application should be able to connect to the database. There we go. All right, that's it. If you would like to learn more about Oracle JDBC service provider extensions, you can find the official GitHub page on GitHub at oracle slash OJDBC extensions. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.